What's up you guys? Welcome back to my little channel. Um, I just wanted to sit down today and film and do some makeup and chat with you guys. Wade and I have made the hard decision to stay home and not go to Montana. We were really, really on the fence there for a while, wanting to just be home with our families and go home. But I think for the safety of everyone in Montana, as well as ourselves staying put is the best move right now so we are staying put and hunkering down with like we kind of um have been doing for the last few months we would do a lot of our work from home so yeah we are here we're in la we're staying positive working as usual and i hope you guys are staying optimistic and happy call your grandmas call your parents all that stuff it's kind of a, a weird time it seems for me to be talking about makeup because it's so trivial with everything else going on. But at the end of the day, this is my happy place. This has always been my comfort and my art and now my job. So um, yeah, I just wanted to do some makeup, sit down. Uh, a few of you guys wrote me some questions on Instagram. So we did a chitty chatty little get ready with me here answering some questions. So I hope you guys enjoy this look. Um, if you want to see more, definitely comment down below what you would like to see, and I will try to make it for you. Okay, let's jump in. Uh, the elephant in the room, obviously, coronavirus is crazy right now. It's taken over all of our lives, and it's just a lot. It's a lot. We are, I think, all feeling the pressure of it right now. Um, so I thought I would just come to my happy place and that is at my makeup table. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send some questions and a couple of people wrote them. So let's see, Adrian Carrot says, how did you get into the industry? So I actually was a bartender after college and through college, but um, I had been bartending for years and years post-college just as like supplementary income and for those of you who don't know I'm originally from Montana the state of Montana so I bartended for years and years I ended up doing sales and marketing for a distillery and did that whole thing for a while and I always was into makeup I had always um been fascinated by makeup loved playing around with it like to do fun, creative looks on myself, but I didn't really ever see it as like a career path, really. Just going in with some eyeshadow primer, first of all, this is the Smashbox primer. Um, yeah, and then actually one day I was getting ready and I was taking forever and my mom came in. I'm just taking the Visart Grande Pro now for some eyeshadow. Yeah, so my mom came in and I was taking forever to do like a winged eyeliner or something like that. And she said, honey, why don't you just like, why don't you just do this for real? Why don't you just do this, you know, full time? And she actually encouraged me. So I definitely owe the push to get into makeup professionally to my mom. Cause I didn't really know that that existed or think that that existed at the time. Um, I'm just going in with my 253 from Smith. This has a nice cool angle on it. And I'm just grabbing a neutral brown color. I'm gonna put that all over the lid. Obviously couldn't just afford makeup school. So I was working two bartending jobs at the time and picked up another one to supplement that cost. And I saved up for school. And I actually was a huge, huge fan of Samantha Ravendahl's videos on YouTube. I'm sure you guys have heard of Samantha, but I was a, huge fan of hers at the time and she made a video at one point I don't know when this was but she made a video about um her experience in makeup school and it was about John Casablancas so that's what sparked my interest there and I started doing some research on different schools um what kind of artistry I wanted to learn naturally just like you know college and everything certain schools specialize in you know makeup for film, makeup for runway, all that stuff. I was really interested in the fashion and beauty side of makeup. So that is, um, that's kind of what I specialized in. I had a really, really great experience in school, but that's how I got started in the industry. Um, it's funny because Wade always reminds me that really my start in makeup came when I lost my hair in high school to alopecia. 
And he's totally right. I was first um, kind of exposed to makeup when I was experimenting on, you know, how to keep my femininity, like how to really discover and showcase my femininity in a new way once I, I didn't have any hair to fall back on and to rely on for my feminine attributes. So that was really what sparked everything. I remember saving up my allowances and buying, you know, like the little Walmart quad of L'Oreal or Maybelline makeup, something like that. Anyways, long story short, that's how I got started in the industry. Okay, next little question here. Okay, so this is Diz Code. Not related, but I just want to let you know that you were beautiful inside out. That's so sweet. Thank you. Um, oh, Peaceful Montana says, at my age 50, shimmer doesn't look right, and in my crease area is hidden. Oh, yeah. It's tougher when you get a little bit older. Sometimes your eyes, you know, you, you have this sensitive skin on your eyes, and it tends to create wrinkles. Um, the older you get. Gets a little wrinkly, that is natural. Nothing weird about that, that will happen to all of us. Yeah, I think shimmer, I've always stayed away for my mature skin. I've always stayed away from any shimmer on the eyelid. Um, typically shimmer or any lighter color is used as a highlight. So it actually brings something forward. Like if I'm trying to make this this little highlight on my nose. I want to bring the light to this, it's highlighting. Whereas if I want to shadow something, I wanna bring it in, make it smaller. So when you're using a lighter color or a shimmer on your eyelid, you're bringing it out. Sometimes um, shimmer on more mature skin that has a little bit of wrinkliness to it can be not so flattering. So I actually prefer to use matte shadows. This is a great example. This is the Viseart or Visart, however you say it. This is the Grande Pro palette. It's completely matte, so no shimmer in any of these shadows. And um, they, they just, I would, just a tip, I would um, maybe play with just matte shadows and find some colors that you really like that maybe are lighter colored, but that are not shimmery. Um, okay, next. When did you start losing your hair? This is from Leela Nicole. I started losing my hair in high school. So I was a freshman in high school. And yeah, man, crazy times. I was a freshman in high school. I think I was 15. I was 15. And yeah, it was crazy, man. I didn't know what was happening. It was so weird. I did not know what was happening, but I just started noticing... Um, clumps and clumps of hair falling out in the shower when I was 15. So it was a little startling at first and I'm really lucky because my mom is a nurse and she went to work right away trying to find, you know, find all the resources she possibly could for me and took me to specialists and we asked a lot of, you know, physician friends that she had and tried to get as much help as possible. But the reality of it was just that, you know, that was just the situation. We all go through hard things. It, for me, it was it was not having hair. You know, I'm, I'm super, super lucky that I had an amazing group of friends. Um, a really great group of friends. At the time, I had a boyfriend in high school. And so it, it didn't disrupt my day-to-day -day very much. I, I was just really, really lucky that I had a solid group of people supporting me. I have wonderful parents who held my hand at every doctor's appointment, every um, blood test, every skin sample I had to give to dermatologists, and they were right there. So I really, in the scheme of things, had things really easy. I, I don't think of it as, I don't know, being crazy or different or anything. It's just something you, you go through. Sometimes you have health issues, and for me, it was this weird autoimmune disorder. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that it came back after being dormant for 10 years, but um, yeah, what do you do? Next question. If you could hire someone to help you with anything, would it be cleaning, cooking, or yard work? Ooh, that's a good question. Probably cleaning. I actually really enjoy cooking. I cook a lot. Okay, so little makeup update. I'm just patting a darker shadow on top of that brown and I'm blending it just above the crease to make a nice kind of smoky, sultry look. 
blending that out so that it looks nice and diffused, kind of grungy. So I'm just taking that same brush, just gonna grab, I don't know, this warm brown from the Natasha Denona Metropolis. And I'm just going to blend that on top of the liner. Um, my sweet girl, Sarah, asked, um, what are your top three eyeshadow palettes? <sighs> that is a tough one. I don't know that I can pick just three, to be honest. This is definitely one of them. This is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I bought this in 2019, and this is definitely one of my all-time favorite palettes that I own. They're really spendy, but they are so beautiful and in my opinion, kind of worth it. I don't know if I can do three, to be honest. That's tough, but I can try and narrow it down to like five, maybe. This is another one of my most used palettes. This is such a great one. You can just chuck in your purse. This is the um, Detour on the Run palette from Urban Decay. It's just a teeny little guy, but the colors in here are just really really unique this switchback color is maybe my favorite eyeshadow of all time i don't know nothing will ever do it justice but it's just really really unique um melt radioactive this is one of my all-time favorites as well you guys know i love color so this is a really great neon palette so gemini is another beautiful one from melt but unfortunately a lot of these either fell out or are smashed unfortunately that one is beautiful but can't use it a whole lot this was so controversial i i really loved this palette so much this is such a a unique shade range uh, this is used and abused and very well loved by me um this is anastasia subculture so i clearly am a sucker for just unique colors and not an everyday basic color palette kind of a thing that's just my style but yeah those are my top five. I hope that was helpful. I hope I covered some of those. Okay, so I've just scooted up a little closer because I'm going in for the eyeliner. All right, what else is on here? Best eye primers for oily lids. Ooh, Smashbox. I was just about to go in with this again. Smashbox 24-hour um, eye primer. This is the best eye primer that I have found to date. Um, really quick side note too. My favorite eyeliner, like liquid eyeliner, has been Kat Von D Trooper forever, ever, ever. It's such a good eyeliner. I found the perfect dupe of all time. The Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Eyeliner is phenomenal. But this tip is a brush tip, not a felt tip, and it is just lovely. I'll show you. I'm just going to slap on a quick little wing here. I've started keeping my wings higher rather than coming down and going up they just create way more of a dramatic wing and sometimes you just want a little flick so this is my little wing um i'm gonna slap on the other one and then we'll jump back um i'm gonna go in and do a little accent liner now so i typically use suva beauty hydra liners those are kind of my favorite to work with but um i'm all out of that i just ran through my last space panda is the white shade that i love to use so i have this snazaru um, white water activated paint that I'm going to use. I just like to spritz that with a little bit of water right directly on the paint and that's really all you need. So maybe I'll zoom you in for a bit. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to take my little puffy and I'm going to set it on the side of my cheek here so I have extra control and I'm just going to go above the crease of my eye and I'm going to make my beginning line. And then just creating the shape that I want there. And I'm gonna follow the tail of that line up and then flick it to kind of mimic my eyeliner a little bit. All right, now that the hard part is over, I'm just gonna slap on some lashes really quick and a little bit of glitter and we'll go from there. Um, I'm gonna go in and do my glitter while my lash glue is drying. Last night when I did this look, I did Crystal Tokyo from um, Lemonhead. There you go. Really, really pretty glitters. But I'm actually gonna go in and just do a gold one today. I really like that one, but it's definitely a little more wet on the eyes, whereas this Midnight Cowboy from 
Urban Decay. This is kind of a go-to staple that I've used for years. The nice thing about this one is it has a brush already. So I'm actually just gonna go along that white line right above it and just add a really thin line of glitter on top. Best tips for shade matching. That's a great question. Shade matching can be tricky. What you wanna do with shade matching, I'll just show you. Take a color and you want to always match it to the side of your cheek. Um, and then down your neck a little bit. And I like to use my finger just to blend it out. You want that color to basically disappear into your skin. So if you can see the pigment, it's a little too dark. If you can see the pigment and it's a little too light, you can tell right away. So you want it to kind of blend in and just truly disappear into your cheek. All right, so here is the glitter so far on my lids. Um, it's not completely, totally symmetrical, but I'm not really going anywhere, so that's okay. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just grab a pop of color. Let's do Subculture Cube. This is a really fun color. I'm gonna take this Esam pencil. This is dual lip pencil in the shade Nude. This is really, really cool. This came in the Camera Ready Cosmetics um, proscription box just a few days ago, and I have been loving this lip liner. I'm just doing my natural shape. The unique thing about this is because it's dual sided, you don't have to grab another pencil and I love that about this. You can just go in with the same pencil and use the other side and use that to kind of line a little bit more intensely. So I'm actually just gonna do that under the bottom lip here and only in the center and not on the sides. See the little shadow that we just made? Just adds a little bit more dimension. And I'm just taking my finger and I'm just softening that line so it's not super harsh. Nice. And I'm gonna do the same just in the center here. So next I'm gonna go in with Carmelo from Stila. This is the Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick and I barely use any of this. I just like to dot it just on the lower lip. And then I just work it in with my lips and tap it out with my finger. So I'm just gonna go through and just take my little NYX pen and I'm just gonna dot this right around the sides of my nose. Okay, now we're really done. I hope you guys liked this look. I had a lot of fun creating this fun little cut crease. Um, probably just gonna take it off now because I got nowhere to go. But um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I had a lot of fun here. Do not forget to subscribe. It would mean the world to me if you wanna keep seeing videos and hanging out. We have all this time at home now, so might as well hang out. I hope you guys are staying healthy and safe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.